beautiful hometown of Putty. are just walking over to my favorite spot ever in Qingdao. It's literally like my go-to spot. I go there when I go jogging. I go there when um, I'm feeling down and I just want to look at the ocean. It's basically the third, like the third beach of Qingdao and it's super close to my home so we're just walking there right now to take some footages and then obviously I have to take pictures here like it's my it's literally my ritual that's what I do every single time I come back to my hometown um, and I want to show you guys around and from that beach you can literally walk to some really really like signature touristy spots um, and tourist attractions so yeah let's go I'm super excited guys look how beautiful this is so right across from the ocean or the beach are these like tall buildings and basically all of like the really good hotels are um, are basically here along this strip right here. If you go that way, there's like Weston, there's like, um, I think there's Intercontinental and you can see St. Regis right there. And guys, if you go along this trail right here, it will take you to the May 4th um, square in which we will be going to in the evening because I think um, it's prettier in the evening. Hey guys, so we just came down to the beach it's so beautiful and just super like chill like it's giving this like really chill nice tranquil vibe there's like a lot of seaweed on the sand So I would say along the back here, like near the third beach, is a really good spot to choose a hotel because all the really nice hotels are here. And it's really convenient to go from one tourist attraction to the next because um, the third beach is actually located in the Shinan district, which is like the southern district. And I would say most of the tourist attractions are actually just in the southern district so you're basically at the heart of Qingdao So right now it is low tide so we see a lot of like tourists and um, local people coming to like the beach and then looking for like um, mini crabs or like seashells or different kinds of little seafood. Also during low tide see like these rocks and but I think it's going to be like high tide in a second because someone was telling us that um, it's coming, like the waves are coming. So yeah. 
Hey guys, so see, um, it says scenic spots right here. So you can find them along this map. And basically along the coastline is like all of the really nice tourist spots and also like the best part of Tung Dao in my opinion. So we were just at this one right here, the third beach. Um, and then right now we're just going into here now. And I just read in this little um, description here, this coastline is 265 kilometers long. So we just finished at the beach and now we're going to this really beautiful park. Um, in this park, if you go up a little bit, it's not so much of a climb and it's actually a really small park to be honest, but you will see the beautiful scenery of Qingdao. So on the top of this park, you will be able to see basically essentially what Qingdao is known for are red roofs and green trees. So we're going there right now. Also guys, if you come to Qingdao, you have to try this um, like water. It's from Laoshan, but just so you guys know, there's a red label and a blue label so this one is the blue label and i think the red one is better but they didn't have it so this one will do we're starting our little ascent and we're just walking up now and i'll just show you guys the scenery once we're up there just following the crowd So there's a little bit of a fog today, so you can't really see the houses really clearly. But on a clear sunny day and on like a blue sky day, you can see like the houses have like beautiful red roofs. And also over there is like the beach and ocean. So this is the first beach of Qingdao. Um, so just before this, we were at the third beach. So this is the first. It pretty much just looks the same, to be honest, guys. So in the morning, we were actually over there where the tall buildings are. So up here, you can also see the TV tower, which is that tower right there. So in this Pagonia right here, there's like a whole bunch of pictures and a little bit of a description of Qingdao. Its history was that it was just a really small fishing village. So we're just going up the Pagonia now. So guys, I feel like with this park, um, it is a great park to go to if you want like a whole um, 360 view of Qingdao scenery. Um, come to this park for that. It's a really nice spot to like have like a panoramic view. So another thing that Qingdao is known for, it's basically a mountainside city, if that makes any sense. So we have a lot of roads that are like uphill, downhill. So um, just be aware if you do come, um, you'll be walking on a lot of these like going uphill stairs and then going downhill, more stairs. So just be aware of that. Before heading home, I stumbled across this stand that was selling sugar-coated hawthorn berries, which is a popular Chinese street snack known as Tanghulu. I loved eating these when I was a kid. Hey 
Hey guys, so it's actually in the evening and we are walking to the May 4th Square, which is one of the most iconic attractions here in Tsingdao. I specifically chose to go there at nighttime because um, it lights up in the nighttime and it's super beautiful and also along the seaside um, there's like different buildings that also light up so we're going over there to check it out right now so let's go. I've got an internet crush She's not a celebrity but She's taken, so can't I fall in love? Can't take the hint and give up. My mama told me don't talk to people you haven't met. I guess my mama was right. But it's not cause everybody you meet is dangerous. But cause they'll break your heart. Cause she plays it so cool, making up her own. We've arrived at the May 4th Square, which is right behind me. So I would always come here like during the day um, in the past. And this is one of like my first times ever here at night. And I would actually recommend coming here at night because as you can see, it lights up. And behind me, there's like a whole bunch of buildings that would also light up. So it's really pretty at nighttime. And because it's like the holiday season right now, there's like quite a few people here, but it's really pretty. Along the side of the beach, you will see many vendors selling souvenirs such as things that are made of seashells like wind chimes. Hey guys, so right behind me, I, I don't think you can see is actually where they held the 2008 um, Beijing Olympics for the sailing games so, um, but it takes quite a while to walk there because you have to go like all the way there and then across um, but just so you know that's another like tourist attraction after the Olympic Games um, in 2008 here we were just at a very popular franchise restaurant called Chuanggu. They specialize in local foods like seafood and all sorts of seafood dumpling. When in Qingdao, one of the must tries is fish dumpling and sea urchin dumpling. This is one of my all-time favorites, which is pig feet jelly. It's full of collagen. Hey guys, so we just finished um, having lunch. And unfortunately, I got a little bit of a cold. Actually, it's quite severe. Um, but I'm just going to Taidong District, which is another really famous district here in Qingdao. Um, and I'm just gonna see if they have any nail salons open to do my nails. And then also show you guys around that area because that area is like a, kind of like a walking district where there's like street markets, um, street food, um, little shops, um, great for doing some shopping. So yeah, we're going right now. The Taidong pedestrian walking street was way too crowded because of the holiday season. As you can see, you can find a bunch of different street foods here. I used to come here every summer when I was young. Hey 
Hey guys, so right now I'm at this wall. So basically this red wall is at the intersection of two roads and they also have like two um, signs and people really like taking pictures here. So, um, so it's kind of like an Instagram famous spot. Also when you're done with the red wall, right across from the red wall has a whole bunch of different um, cafes, a lot of different cafes you can check out and just spend some time here. Hey guys, so from the famous red wall, we walked over to Zhen Tiao, which is literally not even top five guys. I want to say it's the number one iconic attraction in Tsingtao. So why I say this is because it's actually the icon on the logo for the Tsingtao beer. So that's how you know it is the most iconic attraction in Tsingtao. But another thing that people come here for is actually to feed seagulls. So apparently there's actually more seagulls in the morning instead of the afternoon because in the morning the seagulls are hungry but whereas in the afternoon there's so many people who fed them in the morning that they all like fly away and they're not here anymore so definitely come in the morning if you want to see a lot of seagulls So we 
We are at Zhongshan Road right now, the pedestrian street, and right behind me, that church is super famous as well, so we're just gonna walk up there and check it out right now. My mom's a bug inside a tree My dad's the scientist who captured her This cathedral was built during the German occupation of Qingdao and is located in the oldest part of the city. I find it hard to see the truth Cause how romanticize a boring life if that means I'll be happy to The last stop is the Qingdao Beer Museum. It is located on this beer street where you can get fresh beer from restaurants that are provided by the beer factory which is right behind the museum. Inside the museum, there is a store where you can buy beer and souvenir. There's also a little place where you can sit and drink beer on the spot. There's gotta be a better life for me. There's gotta be a better life for me. So that's it for this Qingdao guide, everyone. I had a great time showing you around my beautiful hometown. I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.